Item number, SCP-346. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-346 is to be kept in a store-bought birdcage, at least one meter in height, at 1.5 meters in width either way. No locks or additional security measures are required, as SCP-346 is no stronger nor smarter than the average parakeet. SCP-346's cage is to contain at least two water dishes with standing perches, to be refilled daily, and fed a diet of five to six medium-sized live crickets daily. SCP-346's cage also contains one tree branch for perching, scratching, and climbing, one open-top nest, purchased at a commercial pet store, lined with moss, and a string with bright-colored bells on it for entertainment. The bottom of SCP-346's cage is covered with corncob-based biodegradable bedding and is to be cleaned out and replaced every other week. During cleaning, SCP-346 may be either held by hand, allowed to fly around a room with a closed door, or placed in a paper bag with a book over the end to be held out of the way. SCP-346's cage is held in Dr. Wright's office and may not be moved without her permission. Despite SCP-346's habit of nibbling fingertips and pulling strands of hair, SCP-346 poses no danger upon escape and may be recaptured, gently, with either a net or by hand. Description SCP-346 is a small member of an unidentified family of pterodactyl, ancient flying reptiles. SCP-346 is approximately the size of a small bat and has very lightweight bone structure. Although its head, wings, and legs are bare, its main body is covered with a soft coat of fur-like, dark-colored down. The origin of SCP-346 is unknown and was purchased by Agent in a small pet shop in Brazil, being marketed under the name Congo Mato. The owner of the pet store claims not to know where SCP-346 came from, having purchased a set of eggs off the black market, of which only one, SCP-346, hatched, believing them to be from a rare species of parrot. Some theories suggest that there may be a large colony of creatures similar to SCP-346 somewhere in South America. Testing has revealed that SCP-346 is an adult but appears to have had its growth somewhat stunted by malnutrition and being raised in a small, cramped cage. SCP-346 is also a male, and has been nicknamed by staff who find the little creature's appearance charming, as Terry. SCP-346 behaves in a manner similar to birds and bats, being most active at dawn and dusk, and energetically flying in whatever space it's given, snapping up insects either out of the air or off the ground in branches. SCP-346 chirps and squeaks in a manner similar to birds and rodents, and is most vocal during the evening hours. Some describe this as endearing, others as annoying. Addendum 1 After the discovery of SCP-1265, some theories suggest that there may be a large colony of creatures similar to SCP-346 somewhere in South America. However, the existence of SCP-346 implies that these alleged colonies, should they exist, do not possess the same anomalous properties as SCP-1265. Addendum 2 It has been suggested that further investigation into the origins of SCP-346 should be taken, in the hopes of finding a large colony of similar creatures, perhaps indicative of a surviving member of the pterodactyl lineage, or a rip in space and time. SCP-346 should be kept well away from SCP-529, as per request of Dr. Wright's. Item Number SCP-359 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-359 is to be contained within a 30 meter by 30 meter by 30 meter concrete structure this structure is not to be entered between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. local standard time. Any monitoring of SCP-359 during these hours is to be done via security cameras installed within the structure. SCP-359 is to be fed one adult pig every other day. Acceptable substitutions to this diet must be cleared with Agent and Dr. 
All remnants of SCP-359's prey are to be completely cleaned out of the containment structure by 8.45 p.m. the following day. Description SCP-359 appears to be a metal sculpture of a red-tailed hawk, with a wingspan of approximately 4.3 meters, perched atop a 12-meter arch. During daylight hours, approximately 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. local standard time, it displays no signs of movement and does not respond to any external stimuli. However, it has been determined by the Foundation that between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m., it displays the typical behaviors of an adult red-tailed hawk, apart from being nocturnal. SCP-359 is apparently capable of flight. The mechanisms through which it accomplishes this have not been determined, as its wings are too short to allow for flight. SCP-359 was originally located just south of in the United States. It first came to the Foundation's attention when local foresters began finding dead bodies of white-tailed deer, Rocoileus virginianus, in the area, within a one-kilometer radius of the sculpture, which looked to have been preyed upon. The white-tailed deer has no natural predators in the state of Investigation officially began when motorists on the stretch of state route that passes by SCP-359 reported that the hawk was not on top of the arch. On the same day, a local farmer reported finding the sculpture in his field, standing over the body of one of his cows, which had injuries consistent with predation by a large bird of prey. The farmer was administered a Class A amnestic and fed the story that the cow had died of natural causes and its body eaten by coyotes. Route was closed for repairs, and SCP-359 was transferred to its current containment site and replaced with an immobile replica. Addendum 1 Prior to containment, no evidence existed that SCP-359 had ever attempted to prey on anything besides hoofed mammals. However, since being contained, it has attacked, killed, and eaten four D-Class personnel who entered its containment structure during restricted hours. Investigation into the cause of this shift in dietary preferences is ongoing. Item Number SCP-368 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-368 has not yet warranted any need for containment. Though it has the movement patterns and behavior common to a normal bird, neither it nor any of its copies have shown any desire to migrate from the offices in which they are stored. Description SCP-368 is an animate origami crane folded from ornate heavy stock paper. Left to its own devices, it will perch, preen, fly from platform to platform, groom, and occasionally construct a makeshift nest out of nearby office supplies. It responds to human touch affectionately, much as a domesticated bird would. The item's demeanor is, on the whole, friendly, and it has been observed to perch on the shoulders of various SCP personnel. Though the item needs no source of nourishment, it appears to sleep at night, in that it places its head under its wing. Studying the physical properties of SCP-368 has proven difficult. The item seems to interpret attempts to capture or contain it as a game, and has displayed considerable agility and resourcefulness in evading the most focused attempts at containment. How SCP-368 stays airborne and maintains its stability while airborne are still not known. History SCP-368 was discovered in an office building in Japan in 19... Now employed as 14-1158, a former employee at the aforementioned building, found the item in a closet full of office supplies. Upon discovery of SCP-368, 14-1158 managed to gain its trust in order to move it to a more secure location. Psychological evaluations of 14-1158 indicated her to be of sufficient mental stability and acuity to warrant a position within the SCP organization. Cross SCP Warnings it is recommended that SCP-368 be isolated from SCP-529 and SCP-530, as contact will almost certainly alarm all three SCPs. Addendum 022 On date undisclosed, while housed in Research Sector 15, SCP-368 began displaying unusual behavior. Instead of its normal routine of human interaction, grooming, 
and play. It began hovering over a photocopier, flattening itself whenever SCP personnel approached. Doctor placed SCP-368 into the photocopier and made a copy, upon which another sheet of paper of identical pattern but different hue emerged from the copier and promptly folded itself into a shape mimicking that of the original. SCP-368 in the new specimen, referred to as SCP-368-Alpha, resumed usual behavior. Since then, SCP-368 has displayed similar behavior at intervals varying between two and four years, while the copies have shown no such behavior. Though initially Overseer O disallowed any employee from aiding in the reproduction of SCP-368, and Dr. was reprimanded for his action, remarkably high employee morale at Research Sector 15 led to the introduction of the progeny of SCP-368 at further SCP facilities. Item Number SCP-391 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-391 is to be kept in a 5x5x5-meter aviary made of heavy steel mesh. Structures mimicking mixed broadleaf, deciduous, and pine forests should be placed inside the aviary. Artificial lights mimicking normal day and night patterns are to be kept well maintained. Temperature and humidity should be controlled to mimic a humid continental climate. The door to the aviary is to be kept locked at all times when SCP-391 is not being studied, maintained, or fed. Personnel exiting the aviary are to be searched for objects removed from the aviary. Personnel attempting to remove material from the aviary without permission will be reprimanded. Description SCP-391 is a single female specimen of Tito Alba, or common barn owl. Pellets regurgitated by SCP-391 are typically comprised of some form of precious metal. The metal produced seems to vary with the type of prey ingested. The owl, nicknamed Midas, has been documented regurgitating gold silver, platinum, and other precious metals. Refer to the SCP-391 test logs for more information. SCP-391 was acquired in 2000 after a park ranger reported finding nuggets of gold resembling owl pellets. The Foundation found the report during a routine information sweep. All owls in a 50-kilometer radius were tranquilized and captured under the guise of a tagging and tracking experiment. Agents examined and released over owls before SCP-391 was found. Addendum 3911 After several examinations by Foundation veterinarians, no anomalies have been found within SCP-391. Other than its unusual ability, SCP-391 is a normal adult member of its species. Addendum 3912 Due to repeated contact with researchers Dr. and Dr., SCP-391 has become accustomed to some human contact. However, SCP-391 is still a wild animal and should be treated with caution and respect. Note: Dr. requested permission to breed SCP-391 to see whether the trait would be passed to its young. Request pending approval from the site director. SCP-391 Experiment Log Note: These experiments were carried out after SCP-391 was kept on a restricted diet of boneless, skinless chicken for a week. Researchers also withheld food for 12 hours prior to testing. Name: Dr. Date: Expunged. Item: 1320 gram white rat. Reaction: SCP-391 excitedly killed and ate the rat. Output: 163 gram indium pellet. Note: What was remarkable is the size of the pellet. It was the same size as a pellet from a normal owl. There couldn't have been more than 10 grams of indigestible material on the rat, but the pellet weighed the correct weight for a piece of indium of that size. It seems that whatever is facilitating the change in matter doesn't adhere to the law of conservation of mass. Name: Dr. Date: Expunged. Item: 1320 gram black rat. Reaction: 
Same as the white rat. Output. Same as the white rat. Note. SCP-391 was placed in an enclosed system, where all mass and energy input was carefully measured, and showed a gradual increase in mass about two hours after ingestion. No energy or mass change in the system could account for this increase. It seems color is not important to the reaction. The pellet produced, however, can't yet be explained without violating the basic laws of physics. Name. Dr. Date. Expunged. Item. 1320 gram black rat. Reaction. Same as previous tests. Output. Same as previous tests. Note. The rat used in the test was radio labeled, and the digestion process was observed with specialized equipment. The meat of the rat was separated from the fur and bone, and digested as one would expect in a regular owl. The extra mass in the pellet is not coming from the ingested material itself. Item Number SCP-514 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures There is currently no permanent containment site for SCP-514. SCP-514 is currently being tracked by Mobile Task Force Lambda-4, aka Bird Watchers who are under orders to observe SCP-514. In the event that SCP-514 strays near a densely populated area, or an area where its presence will be easily noticed, Mobile Task Force Lambda-4 is authorized to use the in order to manipulate SCP-514's migration patterns. Access to SCP-514 in the is restricted to Mobile Task Force Lambda-4. Level 4 personnel may also have access, but must have O5 level approval beforehand. Any experiments and weapons tests with SCP-514 must be performed exclusively at the Foundation Advanced Weapons Research Facility. In the event that SCP-514 risks public exposure or capture by rival groups, Mobile Task Force Lambda-4 is authorized to terminate the threat by any means necessary. It is highly recommended that such threats be terminated before they reach SCP-514's zone of influence, though this is not strictly necessary. Description SCP-514 is a flock of Columba Livia Domestica, or homing pigeons. Visual analysis confirms that these pigeons are in fact the kind used in White Dove release ceremonies. However, the type of ceremony they were used in, or the identity of who bred these doves, is currently unknown. What makes SCP-514 unusual is the weapon and aggression nullification zone of influence it seems to project around itself. This zone of influence projects itself in a roughly 500 meter radius around the flock, though this estimation varies depending on the flock's size. This zone of influence renders every known type of weapon inoperable, and often destroys affected weapons after prolonged exposure. For instance, firearms will immediately jam or misfire, explosives will be rendered inert, and melee weapons will decay into dust. Also, the items SCP-514's zone of influence destroys appear to be selective. For further details, see Experiment Log 514-A. In addition to its weapon nullification ability, SCP-514 can also somehow suppress violent emotions and intent in sentient beings within the Zone of Influence. Interviews with staff and civilians who had been exposed to the Zone of Influence said that they felt very calm and content, even when they felt stressed and angry just moments before. For further details, see Experiment Log 514-B. Currently, there appears to be no harmful or lasting effects to being exposed to SCP-514's Zone of Influence. Rigorous physical and psychological screening of individuals exposed to the Zone of Influence showed nothing out of the ordinary. SCP-514 was first discovered when numerous reports of weapons stockpiles were reported as having been destroyed in numerous African nations. While the initial reports were written off as poor maintenance on the part of the owners of the weapons, additional reports of sightings of a flock of homing pigeons, which are uncommon in Africa, garnered Foundation interest. An investigation team was sent to track SCP-514, 
where they encountered a team claiming to be affiliated with the MANA Charitable Foundation, who were also tracking it. The MCF members admitted they released SCP-514 in an effort to, quote, end all conflict in Africa, end quote, despite not having a reliable way to control its movements. Unfortunately, the MCF was apparently unaware that SCP-514's aggression suppression effects were only temporary once affected subjects were no longer within its zone of influence, and they would resume hostilities with improvised or primitive weaponry once SCP-514 left. In addition, SCP-514's random movements caused only certain regions to be disarmed, leaving them vulnerable to invasion by their unaffected neighbors. It took another three weeks before NTF Lambda-4 were able to bring the to control SCP-514's movements. The MCF members then challenged the Foundation team for possession of both SCP-514 and the Since both parties were still under SCP-514's effects, the conflict was resolved through a single round of rock-paper-scissors, with the Foundation being the victor. The MCF members then fled the area before they could be further questioned. The origin of SCP-514 and how it came into the possession of the MCF remains unknown. Experiment Log 514-A Various tests were performed by continually using the to have SCP-514 circle around the Foundation Advanced Weapons Research Facility. Firearms Items used Glock 9mm handgun, Colt 45 1911 handgun, MP5 submachine gun, Thompson submachine gun, M16 assault rifle, AK-47 assault rifle, saw, M24 sniper rifle, data expunged. All weapons confirmed to be in working order. Result: All weapons, when tested, failed to fire. Later inspection showed that all weapons suffered from various mechanical failures that rendered the weapons useless. Ammunition exposed to the zone of influence also failed to fire when loaded into weapons not affected by the zone of influence. Chemical propellant was found to be rendered completely inert. Explosives Items used One standard hand grenade 28.35 grams 1 ounce of dynamite 28.35 grams, 1 ounce, of C4 high explosive, 28.35 grams or 1 ounce of thermite, 1 81mm high explosive mortar round, 1 120mm tank shell, data expunged. Result: All explosives were immediately rendered inert when exposed to the zone of influence. In addition, any detonators or components that would aid in the detonation of the tested devices suffered mechanical and electronic failures. Melee weaponry. One combat knife. One steak knife. One baseball bat. One katana. One poleaxe. One spear. Result. All weapons, with the exception of the steak knife and the baseball bat, were rendered useless through accelerated rate of decay. However, when the steak knife and baseball bat were used in a threatening manner, both items were immediately rendered useless through accelerated decay. Weapons of Mass Destruction One liter of sarin nerve gas, one gram of weaponized anthrax, one tactical nuclear warhead. Result: All weapons rendered completely inert. All samples, including the nuclear material, were completely degraded, and instruments recorded no radiation. In the case of the warhead, the electronic detonator was also rendered useless. Conclusion SCP-514's zone of influence appears to be able to render any conventional weapon inoperable. Also, the damage each weapon suffers is directly proportional to how long the weapon is exposed to the zone of influence. In under an hour, all weapons eventually degraded into dust. The zone of influence is also somehow selective being able to discern items that are actively designed as weapons from items that are potentially dangerous, but not specifically designed to be weaponized. However, SCP-514 also appears to be able to discern when an item will be used for violent intent, and said item will be directly affected by the zone of influence. 
It remains unclear whether SCP-514's ability to selectively target certain weaponry and discern hostile intent is a property inherent to its zone of influence, or if it is directly controlled on the part of SCP-514 itself through some form of group intelligence. Dr. Experiment Log 514B Live subjects were exposed to SCP-514 zone of influence for an extended period of time. The subjects were divided into two groups. Voluntary test subjects drawn randomly from the general population as the control group, and Class D personnel with a history of violent behavior as the test group. Tests showed that the test group's violent tendencies were completely suppressed and acted in a similar fashion to the control group. Suppression of the test group's violent tendencies occurs even after the subjects leave the zone of influence, though the duration is directly proportional to the time spent exposed to the zone of influence. Live testing against sentient SCPs proposed. Pending 05 approval. Dr. Addendum 1. Several high-ranking members in the Foundation's military branch, as well as various associated government agencies, have expressed interest in weaponizing SCP-514. There is great strategic and tactical value in an asset that can effectively neutralize an entire enemy army's arsenal in a short period of time. There are also requests to test SCP-514's zone of influence against several Keter-level SCPs. However, access to SCP-514, as well as the remains restricted. O5 Command is currently deliberating the issue. Addendum 2. All attempts to capture SCP-514 for containment and study have been met with failure. Every agent, doctor, and researcher sent to capture SCP-514 steadfastly refused to complete the mission. This is most likely a reaction to SCP-514's zone of influence. Attempts to remotely capture the flock through the use of drones or long-range devices have resulted in the destruction of all equipment involved. It is evident that SCP-514 interprets any attempts to capture it as a hostile act triggering the nullification effects of its zone of influence in response. Again, it is still unclear whether that is a property inherent to SCP-514's zone of influence, or is regulated through a group intelligence among the flock. Surveillance with Mobile Task Force Lambda-4 still in effect, but the use of the authorized. Addendum 3. As of date expunged. All members of Mobile Task Force Lambda-4 are required to be proficient in various non-violent, competitive activities, including but not limited to sports, board games, card games, video games, trivia, riddles, and rock-paper-scissors. Are you serious? The fate of one of our SCPs could be decided on the outcome of rock-paper-scissors! O5 I assure you, sir, you have nothing to fear. We are dead serious about these matters. Captain Mobile Task Force Lambda-4, Bird Watchers. Note. Captain, couldn't you have chosen a more dignified game as your primary conflict resolution method? Seeing two grown men in all-black tactical gear taking a children's card game so seriously is off-putting. 0511. Item number, SCP-659, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures All specimens of SCP-659 must be kept at least 25 meters distant from each other. Ideally, specimens should be stored in separate facilities. But, research has shown that 25 meters is sufficient to prevent flock behavior. Specimens of SCP-659 can be held in containment able to hold an ordinary bird. However, the containment strategy must be changed at least once per week. More frequent changes are permitted if the specimen appears to have discovered an escape method. Previously used containment strategies must not be recycled on the same specimen. In the event of catastrophic containment failure, total facility lockdown must be enacted. Recovery or extermination of all wild SCP-659 is extremely high priority. Formation of a wild flock must be prevented by any means necessary. 
Description SCP-659 is a species of bird resembling a heron which displays a modular intelligence. Native to North America, only a single flock of SCP-659 is known, although there have been unconfirmed sightings in Europe. SCP-659 is now known to be able to subsist on any form of meat, although whenever possible, it will still consume fish. When an individual specimen is kept isolated from the flock, it is indistinguishable from an ordinary bird. However, when specimens come near each other, each gains the combined intelligence of the group. Even when independent from the group, SCP-659 is still more intelligent than most species of bird. An isolated SCP-659 can solve simple problems, use tools, and learn extremely quickly. When in a group, SCP-659 is capable of escaping all forms of containment the Foundation has attempted to use. For this reason, the only effective containment strategy is isolation. Research has determined that SCP-659 achieves human-level intelligence and sapience when the flock reaches individuals in size. Although the flock is extraordinarily coordinated, it does not display the properties of an aggregate consciousness or hive mind. Beyond the increase in intelligence, there is no telepathic element to their behavior. Descent has also been observed. At this level of intelligence, the flock becomes capable of learning human languages, and iterations of the flock have, in the past, learned to converse in English, Spanish, and French. The flock is capable of even faster learning than an individual, and even a small flock surpasses human learning speed. At this level of intelligence, SCP-659 also develops a vigorous hostility to humans. While this behavior was not present when SCP-659 was first encountered in the wild, it has been present in every iteration of the flock since Incident 659-A. Addendum Incident 659-A On a containment breach at Site released a flock of specimens of SCP-659, resulting in the death of all on-site personnel, with the exception of individuals. Summarized, the flock prevented any attempt to leave by pecking holes in the tires of every vehicle on site, severing site phone lines, and sending a detachment to observe the facility from the air. MTF was dispatched to investigate the sudden communications blackout and eventually established control with heavy casualties. The observational detachment remains at large. Addendum Interview Log 659-1 Interviewed SCP-659-1 Interviewer Dr. S Forward The following interview was conducted after the site containment breach. The flock was not yet separated. Thus, the Foundation decided to attempt communication. The interviewer is separated from the flock by a pane of bulletproof glass. Dr. S. conducted the interview. Dr. S. Hello. I am Dr. S. Can you understand me? A small group of SCP-659 descends on one of their own, killing it. One individual, not one of the small group, hereafter SCP-659-1, pecks its beak into the corpse, covering it with blood. It writes a message on the glass with the blood. SCP-659-1 Written Yes Dr. S. Why did you do this? SCP-659-1 begins to write before finding that the blood on its beak has dried. It pecks the corpse again. SCP-659-1 Written Don't act like don't know. Dr. S. I don't know. SCP-659-1 pecks the corpse. SCP-659-1, written, you started this. Dr. S, we started this. What did we do to you? SCP-659-1 pauses. All individuals of SCP-659 appear to shake their heads. SCP-659-1 pecks the corpse. SCP-659-1, written, 
Freedom. After this, SCP-659-1 refused to answer any further questions. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.